Hi, I'm Bob Frederick. This is my home wood shop, which I built myself in my basement. If you've been here before, welcome back. If this is your first time, welcome. This particular video is going to be on the scroll saw. The scroll saw is my favorite tool in the shop. It's a versatile tool. You can do a lot with it. And this is just going to be an intro to the scroll saw. I have already 50 plus videos on this site. Uh, virtually every one of them is a scroll saw project. Um, so let's get started. But first of all, we want to talk a little bit about shop safety. And the first thing is this is a very, it's a dusty environment. The scroll saw is a lot less dusty than say a table saw or a band saw. Uh, certainly a thickness planer or a sander, but it still kicks up dust. So it would be a good idea to have some kind of protective eyewear. I wear glasses anyway, so these are uh, safety glasses, they're plastic and they won't, uh, they won't, they won't break. So I'm, I was with safety glasses. Uh, hearing protection, this is a, compared to other tools, this is a much quieter tool than most. If you're working in the table saw or the band saw, thickness planer, uh, for sure you want to wear hearing protection. For this, uh, I think probably the best option is to wear no noise canceling earphones. That way you can listen to music while you're uh, at the straw or if you don't want to listen to music just some noise canceling earphones to cancel out the, the highest amount of the noise to prevent you from damaging your hearing. The scroll saw does kick up a lot of dust. I notice when I'm done with a session that I have to clean my glasses because there's a pretty good layer of dust on them. So it's also a pretty good idea to wear a dusk mask and you can either use the throwaway paper ones or I like this. This is from RZ uh, it's RZ Industry. Anyway, this is not a paid endorsement. This is just what I picked up and I like it. Uh, this has throwaway filters. You can use them for a while when they get uh, then they get to a point where they need to be replaced. They're easily replaceable. And while we're on the subject of dust, the shop is a dusty place and the scroll saw as I said, kicks up dust. Usually, what I do is I have some clothes down here in the basement that I wear just in the wood shop. When I come down to the basement, I change clothes. When I'm done working in the shop and before I go back upstairs, I change clothes again. This is my jet scroll saw. I've had this for several years now. Very happy with it. It is one of, is a is a higher end saw. saw. It uh, was right in the neighborhood of a thousand dollars but for all the work that I do on it it's well worth the investment to have a good scroll saw. Now if you're just starting out you don't have to spend a thousand dollars on a scroll saw. This particular saw has a speed control up on top so you can speed up or slow down the blade and there's a blower that keeps the uh, that blows dust off the, the cut line which is very very helpful and there are upper and lower blade holders. There are different types. These, I replaced the originals, the, the jet, because I was having some trouble. I kind of I wore them out, basically. And so I replaced them with the Pegasus blade holders. Accessories, I leave the scroll saw plugged into a foot switch and show you down here on the floor. And you can stop and start the blade with the foot switch. I think it comes in handy for for being starting and stopping a cut. It also allows you to keep both your hands on the workpiece and not have to take them off to make a stop or a start. I use a lighted magnifier. Uh, I'm 75 years old as of the taping of uh, as of this video, and my eyes are still pretty decent but they're not what they used to be and I do a lot of intricate work so the light and magnifier comes in handy. Let me show you what it looks like through the magnifier. Alright so this is I'm going to be cutting out some legs for a for some dogs for a cell phone stand. That's what they look like on their own by using the light and magnifier you get a much closer this is by themselves this is through the magnifier and 
if you're doing intricate work, they re that thing really comes in handy. There is a large variety of scroll, of scroll saw configurations uh, available. Uh, you, they've got the skip tooth, reverse tooth, precision ground tooth, sharp tooth, modified geometry. They all do a little bit different job. Well, it depends on what you're going to be doing, how precise is your work, how thick of a work piece are you working on, things like that. Uh, this is just a basic video and I could spend a whole video just on that. If you are interested in the video just on scroll saw blades, please leave me a comment and then I will put that on my list of things to do. I like reverse tooth blades and right now my go-to, my favorite, are the modified geometry blades from made by Pegasus. I get them from Bearwood Supply. Uh, I know that at least some of the Pegasus blades are available in stores. I bought some at a woodcraft store not too long ago. So check out your local store, your woodworking store, big box store to see what they have. I would recommend trying different types of blades to see which ones you like the best and which work best for the type of woodwork you are doing. There's also a wide variety of sizes. They come from a, I think 2.0 is the smallest and up to a 12 and uh, the basic rule my basic rule of thumb is I use mostly 3, 5, 7, 9 and 12 the number 3 I'm going to use for something thin like a eighth or one quarter inch the number 5 I'm going to use for a three eighths to a half number 7 for a half to three quarters a number 9 for three quarters to an inch and a number 12 for anything over an inch the basic rule of thumb though is the harder the wood, the larger the blade you're going to need. But the also the other rule of thumb is the more intricate the cut, the smaller the blade you're going to need. So you're going to need to find out what works for each project. And that's where the scroll saw variable speed also comes in. You can slow it down or speed it up depending on what the project is and the blade size. I also should point out that there are some manufacturers have blade or distributors have various mixes available blades. For instance, I was on the Bear Woods Supply website not too long ago and they have an assortment uh, of the, it's mostly the modified geometry blades, but there's some, some others in there too. It'll give you three, five, seven, nines, and twelves, I think. but. Uh, basically 12 different a dozen each of 12 different blades that's a good idea if you're just starting out buy the assortment so you get to try a little bit of each, a little bit of each one one last thing to note on blades sizes and that is uh, on the Bearwoods supply website they have this chart available it gives you the uh, the different blades super skip skip um, and so on and it gives you a little picture of what each blade looks like but even more than that it gives you blade thickness the width the number of teeth per inch uh, the optimal thickness recommended for each material for instance the 2-0 uh, they would recommend it for up, up to a quarter inch at the most uh, the number zero for uh, up to a quarter inch and so on the um, there's a lot of information here, which size pilot hole you would want to drill if you're making inside cuts with these blades. This is on their website and it's free, so I would highly recommend you download the chart. Uh, I highly recommend a stand for the scroll saw. If you don't have a stand, you'll have to put it on a counter. But whatever, you need something that's very sturdy. This does produce some vibration. You don't want to eliminate, uh, you want to minimize the vibration as much as you can. Uh, my scroll saw is at, is at a height that I use a stool. Now I can stand and I, I will do some some sawing from the standing position, but I do this for hours at a time and I get tired. So the, the stool comes in very handy. I'm going to move this out of the way for just a moment. So you have a scroll saw, you've got some blades, and the next step is that you want to 
you want to make something. I would recommend, if you have no experience whatsoever, find some scrap wood, because uh, the price of lumber these days is uh, not cheap, uh, and then just draw, find some, find some patterns that just draw some random lines and work on following those lines. Okay, I've got some quarter inch stock here and I could use a number three or a number five blade. I don't have a lot of three blades left. I've got quite a few fives, so I'll use the five. I may need to slow it down again, so that's also a good thing. I can show you the speed. This is a number five blade, uh, and a uh, number five reverse tooth blade. It's from Olson. It's a number five Mach Speed. It's 13 tooth teeth per inch. I found it works out very nice on up to three eighths, and it seems to be good. Does a good job as long lasting. So you're going to. There is an up and a down on these. The teeth are very small. And uh, with a magnifying glass, you can see them, but you don't want to take out a magnifying glass just to figure out which, how to mount this thing. And there's a particular way to mount them, so I'm going to show you that. Now, my, rule, my way of doing it is pretty simple. You take the blade, you run it across your thumb. Not hard, but you, you would have to work to cut yourself. Uh, this way, and you get quite a bit of resistance. This way, you get a little bit, but nowhere near as much. So you want it in the direction that it gets the most resistance, that's going to be down because you want to do most of your cutting on the down stroke. So you mount that with that side down. I just mount it loosely in the upper blade holder, get it into the lower blade holder, tighten that, and then I come back and tighten the upper blade holder. These are, as I mentioned, the Pegasus blade holders. They're very easy to work. You've got to upper and a lower and they both have this thumb screw. If it's tight you should get that a little bit of a sound. But I'll start right on the corner of this leg here. And that's a number five blade. I really don't need that fast since this material is only a quarter inch thick. You don't want the blade to be cutting too aggressively. the blade do the work. If the blade's cutting without too much effort, just guidance, that's what we want. All along. Now, most, the most cuts I'm going to just try to follow the line and obliterate the line with the cut. Something like this, if you're a little bit off one way or the other, inside or outside the line, it really doesn't make any di it's not going to make any difference. Uh, when you get into other some other areas and parts are fitting together, then it does make a difference. Alright, so that's a basic cut. Um, make sure your blade is tight and upper and lower. Check it from time to time if it's slipping. You want to retighten the upper and the lower. And if it's too tight, the you're going to break blades. If it's too loose, you're not going to have proper control. So you're going to have to spend some time learning what is the proper tension on the blade. You're going to want, obviously, a once you've fooled around with it a little bit so you've got a somewhat of a feel for it, you're actually going to want to want, you're going to want to make something. So find a pattern. Start with something relatively simple. I have a video on nine methods to transfer a pattern to wood. I'll, I'll, I'll reference that. It'll probably be in the uh, upper right hand corner if I remember correctly. And so use that. In this case I use scroll saw tape too and that's my favorite method to attach the pattern to the wood. I like to start with a sharp corner when I can, but this one doesn't particularly have, this one doesn't have one. Let the blade do the work. If it's bogging down, 
then speed the blade up if you can or if it's already at maximum speed and the blade is bogging down then it's probably getting dull and once the blade starts getting dull just take it out toss it put in a new blade blades are relatively cheap and uh, if if you leave it if you keep using it after it's become dull it might actually start burning the wood and then you've got to sand to clean that up and something like this is not easy to sand the other thing is when you're cutting You want to use both hands, that's why the that's why the foot switch comes in handy. And you're using both hands to control the work piece. I'm right-handed. But I'm using both hands. Using the hold the work piece down and to make the turns to follow the line. There's another leg for a dog. All right, I've got a project I'm working on. It's got uh, a lot of interior cuts. Best mom ever. I actually started this for Mother's Day, and I made a couple of them for Mother's Day, and then I ran out of time to make any more. So, what you want to do for an interior cut is you want to loosen the blade. Now, this particular saw will hold in the up position. So, raise it to that up position. Use the you feed the blade through, feed the blade through the pilot hole. Get it into the blade holder. Tighten the blade holder. And then make your cut. You can screw this up a little. There you go. That's an interior cut. As you can see, i got a lot of interior cuts to go on that one. I really enjoy doing this, but um, this, this one's going to take quite a bit of time because of the number of interior cuts. Uh, the price on that's going to, be, going to be in proportion to how much time I spent on it. It's going to be a little bit on the expensive side, but who, if you want to honor your mother, you can afford a few bucks. So you unclamp the saw, feed it through the pilot hole, clamp it again, make your cut, unclamp it, lift it up, and so on. You just keep doing that over and over. The scroll saw is the only tool that can do that. Well, you could do interior cuts with the jigsaw, but they're obviously going to be much bigger because of the large, because of the size of the blade. But this is one of the places the scroll saw is unique in, in the things that it can do. That gives you the basics on a scroll saw. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer them. Give me a day or two. Uh, usually I get notified when there's comments to my videos, but uh, it might, I'll answer them as quickly as I can, but it might take me a day or two to get to them. Uh, and I would appreciate comments. If there's anything, any questions you have, anything you'd like to see, would you like to see a whole video just on the different blades uh, a whole video on anything at all regarding the scroll saw, let me know in the comments. Please give it a like, subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this, and of course, lots and lots of project videos.